Hello people, welcome to my channel, welcome to another video, this is my AFC Bournemouth vs Chelsea preview for the game which will be taking place at the Vitality Stadium tomorrow in the Premier League with kickoff being at 7.45pm UK time. So what I'm going to do for you guys in terms of this preview is that firstly I'll be giving you the team news concerning both sides and as always I'll be starting off with the team news concerning the home side which in this case will be AFC Bournemouth. Then I'll give you my lineup based on the team news in which I'm about to give you. And lastly, I'll, give, I'll be giving you my score prediction along with Paul Merson's score prediction and some of Google's probabilities. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so starting off with the AFC Bournemouth team news, there are two main stories concerning the AFC Bournemouth first team and the first one is to do with Callum Wilson and this story explains that he is likely to face late fitness tests after sustaining a knee injury against West Ham United 10 days ago. And the second story concerning the AFC Bournemouth team is to do with Dominic Solanke and Chris Meatham. Now I'm not entirely sure if I pronounced his name correctly but I might as well try. So um, getting into this story. The first part is um, to do, like I said, is to do with Dominic, Dominic Solanke, who is obviously an ex-Chelsea player, and this um, this part of the story um, says that he will he will not be match fit for a few more weeks due to a hamstring hamstring injury. Sorry, and the second part of the story um, says that um, Chris Meatham will be available for the Cherries. So that's it for the AFC Bournemouth team news. Moving on to the Chelsea team news now, and there are also team team. There are also two. Um, two stories concerning the Chelsea first team and the first one is to do, is to do with Eden Hazard and that is that he is likely likely to start after not fe after not featuring at all in Chelsea's 3-0 victory over Sheffield Wednesday on Sunday and the second um, story concerning the concerning the Chelsea first team is to do with Callum Hudson-Odoi and that is that he is likely to miss tomorrow's game after handing in a transfer request now I'm not entirely sure if that's true but um if it is true then then Chelsea have have not handled this very well at all. They really need to do everything they can to make make sure that Callum Hudson Odoi stays because he's only 18, and um, we need to make sure that he's guaranteed playing time. But yeah, um, those those are the stories concerning both both teams, and that's it for the team news completely. Shall I say? Moving on to my lineup and starting off with the formation as always, it is going to be a 4-3-3 with that deep line playmaker involved. Um, as that is Mauricio Sarri's preferred formation, do I even need to say that anymore? I'm going to sound like a broken record soon. But yeah, 4-3-3, um, deep line playmaker involved. In terms of the personnel I've gone with, I've gone with Kepa in goal. I think that Mauricio Sarri will put him back in goal. Put him back in goal, yes. Um, because it is a Premier League game and it is a crucial fixture f crucial fi fixture for us in terms of the top four race. But yes, I've gone with Kepa in goal. I've gone with a back four from right to left of Cesar Aspilicueta, Antonio Rudiger, David Luiz and Emerson Palmieri. Now, the reason why I've gone with Cesar Aspilicueta at right back is because um, I don't see Maurizio Sarri not playing him. I do believe that Cesar Aspilicueta has played too many games recently, so I would like to see David Zappacosta start, as he is the only other right back in which we have, as Victor Moses, who can play at right back, has gone out on loan to Fenerbahce. So that's the back four I've gone with. In terms of the midfield three, I've actually um, gone for surprise, um, and you'll see what the surprise is. I've gone with a, um, I've gone with Jorginho in that deep line playmaker role with Ruben Loftus Cheek and Ingolo Kante just ahead of him. Now you lot would probably expect me to go with Ross Barkley or Mateo Kovacic, but the reason why I've gone with Ruben Loftus Cheek is because he, um, he he has just come back from injury. So if we are going to keep him fit, he needs to stress that injury. Um, so that he can recover. So that's the midfield three I've gone with. And in the front three, I've gone with a front three from right to left of Pedro Rodriguez, Gonzalo Higuain and Eden Hazard. Now the reason why I've gone with Gonzalo Higuain up top is because Alvar Morata has gone out on loan to Atletico Madrid for 18 months. So um, no more no more, no more, more of me mentioning Alvar Morata in my videos in terms of, um, in terms of my lineup or my chosen lineup, shall I say. But to recap, Kepa in goal, a back four from right to left of Cesar Aspilicueta, Antonio Rudiger, David Luiz and Emerson Palmieri. A midfield three of Jorginho in that deep line playmaker role with Ruben Loftus-Cheek and N'Golo Kante just ahead of him. And in the front three, I've gone with a front three from right to left of Pedro Rodriguez, Gonzalo Higuain and Eden Hazard. Now moving on to the predictions and starting off with Paul Merson's score prediction. He has gone with a 3-1 Chelsea win as he believes that Bournemouth do like to go forward. Um, although he believes that the fact that Bournemouth like to go forward 
can play into Chelsea's hands and he thinks that, that Chelsea will have too much for the Cherries. Now moving on to Google's probabilities, they have gone with an 18% chance of a Bournemouth victory, a 25% chance of a draw and a 57% chance of a Chelsea victory. So Google clearly believes that Chelsea are the favourites for this one. Now to conclude this preview, I'm going to give you my score prediction. Now I've gone with a 2-1 Chelsea victory, simply because I can see AFC Bournemouth making this really hard for the Blues. Eddie Howard want to make sure that Eden Hazard, who has an excellent goal scoring, who has an excellent goal scoring record against him, is locked out of the game. I think that they can cause Chelsea problems. Overall, I don't see Chelsea putting in a great performance because of because of AFC Bournemouth the quality of the AFC Bournemouth players. I think that they have some really good players, which I'll explain in my four things in which we need to do in order to beat AFC Bournemouth video, which will be done very soon. But yeah, I don't I don't see Chelsea putting in a great performance, but I do see them being strong enough to, to grind out a result. So that is the end of this preview. I am sorry for stuttering again. I am still on, on my recovery process from fatigue, so forgive me. I will be I'm releasing my seven favourite goals in which Chelsea have scored against Bournemouth, um, and then my four things in which we need to do in order to beat them. Um, I will be releasing those videos very soon, so stay tuned for those videos. I hope you all enjoyed this one. I... Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm I'm gonna go now before I before I bore you lot. <laughs> but yeah, um come on you blues and peace and I'll see you all very soon.